This is exactly, Bukai said, what verse 48, chapter 30 tells us. God alone is the one who sends forth the winds. Then they stir up the clouds. Then he spreads them across the sky, however he so wills. Then he rends them into billowing patches. Then you see rainfall issuing from their midst. Clouds formed by condensation are the ones described in verse 57, chapter 7. For it is he who sends the winds bearing glad tidings before the rain showers of his mercy. Until they lift condensed clouds aloft, we drive them to a lifeless land. Then thereon we send down water, then we bring forth therewith fruits of every kind. Now with rain reaching the sea, Bukai continued, the cycle is soon repeated. When rain falls on the land, it may be absorbed by vegetation and thus aid the latter's growth. The vegetation in its turn gives off water and thus returns some water to the atmosphere. The rest, to a lesser and greater extent, infiltrates into the soil, whence it is either conducted through channels into the sea or comes back to the Earth's surface network through springs or resurgences. Bukai's ending note was conclusive. When one compares the modern data of hydrology to what is contained in numerous verses of the Quran quoted in this topic, one has to admit that there is a remarkable degree of agreement between the Quran and modern hydrology. <laughs>